T.E. Lawrence. Manfred von Richthofen. The Battle of Bella Wood. The 82nd Airborne. Flanders Fields. The Battle of Verdun. Francis Pegamagabau. Pega. Magabau. Pegamagabau. The Oswijk Fortress. And tanks. You're welcome. The Swedish power metal lords. Sabaton. Are back to give us another lesson in military history with the Great War. Yes, 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 it is England, Hampshire, summertime. Absolutely tipping it down. Has been all day. You don't care, that's not what you came here for. So, The Great War, this is the band's ninth studio album and their follow-up to 2016's The Last Stand. It's also the first album to feature new guitarist Tommy Johansson. And this album is based entirely on the First World War. Now, there are multiple versions of this album. There's the standard edition. Of course. The history edition. Featuring a narrated intro to each song. And the soundtrack edition. Featuring the orchestrated instrumentation of each track. But for this review, I will be focusing squarely on the standard edition. Now, I think it's worth pointing out that I've never really been a true fan of power metal. It's always been one of those genres that I've never truly got into. But I'm going to give this album a fair shot. I can absolutely assure you of that. And I will conduct the review accordingly. Also, by the way, if you haven't already, make sure you like, comment, share, do all the rest of it. And if you are subscribed, make sure you do that bell thing, you know, with the notification bit. I know a lot of you ain't doing it. I know you're not. I know. And if you feel so inclined, why not check out my second channel, Free To Be Positive? Why not, you know, just trying to put out a bit of, you know, positivity out in the world? Why not? What's wrong with that? Try it. Go on, give it a go. No more messing about. Let's review. First up, we have The Future of Warfare. This song addresses the introduction of tanks into modern warfare. Not only would this change how battles would be fought from here on in, but it would also show the advancement in technology, or the start of the advancement of technology in modern warfare. On the 15th of September 1916, tanks were used in battle for the first time. In the Battle of Flair Consolé, I might have said that wrong. A desolate wasteland. Infernal depiction of hell. The birth of a new way. September 15, 1916. The song itself is a huge bombastic affair that perfectly introduces what's to come. The musicianship is clearly of a very high calibre and frontman Joachim Broden sounds very impressive. Next up we have Seven Pillars of Wisdom. The Seven Pillars of Wisdom was a book written by T.E. Lawrence, also known as Lawrence of Arabia, about his experiences in Arabia. Some very intricate riffing throughout this one, it sounds kind of like an amped up Iron Maiden. As is often the way with power metal, we get a huge, glorious chorus. As the darkness falls and Arabia calls, one man spreads his wings as the battle begins. May the land lay claim onto Lawrence's name. Seven pillars of wisdom light the flame. It has to be said, I wasn't a huge fan of the verses on this song, but there is absolutely no denying the chorus on this one. Awesome. Why did you laugh then? It was just... Ugh. Next up, 82nd All The Way. And this is a song about Sergeant Alvin York and the 82nd Division. York was one of the most decorated US soldiers of the First World War, receiving the Medal of Honor for leading an attack on a German machine gun nest. Taking at least one machine gun, killed at least 25 enemy soldiers, and captured 132. That's one bad mother father. A huge 80s influence on this song. It sounds like something else, but I can't quite place it. Maybe leave a comment down below if you have an opinion. And yet again, we get a damn catchy chorus. Into the fires of hell, the Argonne, a hero to be. Entered the war from over the sea. Intervene, 1918. All the way from Tennessee, Hill 223. Next up is The Attack of the Dead Men. This was written about the attack of the dead men, which occurred on April 6th, 1915. The German army launched several gas attacks on the Oswick Fortress, killing all but roughly 60 to 100 men. Refusing to give up, these remaining men charged out of the fortress to fight back. The Germans ran, mostly out of fear for their appearance. But they looked like dead men covered in rags and blood. I wasn't a huge fan of this one, I have to admit. The vocal cadence had a kind of a Gregorian chant type quality, which I more often than not enjoy. But I found it a little bit too jarring in this song. Oswick, then and again. Attack of the dead, hundred men. Facing the lead once again. Hundred men charge again. Die again. Ripping guitar solo though. Next up. Devil Dogs. The term Devil Dogs was coined in April of 1918 by the Germans. This was their name for the American soldiers. During the Battle of Belleau Wood. 
The nickname remains to this day. I have to admit that I struggled with this song as well. It was just a bit too bombastic for me. I completely understand that it's fully in line with the kind of militaristic theme that the band are putting across, but yeah, I just, I just, I, mm, I, went, I went into this one. It's just not the sort of music that I enjoy. That being said, I really, really enjoyed the bridge section, particularly the inclusion of, come on, you sons of bitches, do you want to live forever? Which was yelled at the battle by Sergeant Daniel Daly before charging the Germans. Next up we have The Red Baron. A song about the Red Baron. Well thank god you were here to clear that up. Manfred von Richthofen. The greatest aerial ace of the Great War with over 80 kills attributed to his name. Not only did he have this outstanding reputation for aerial combat, but he also painted his plane red. Hence, the Red Baron. Starts out with this very old school sort of John Lord style keyboard. And I have to say I enjoyed this song a lot. This was as bombastic as some of the previous songs, but it just had an energy and a vibe to it that I really, really enjoyed. I, I don't know. I don't know if fun is quite the right word, but yeah, it was, it was just, I enjoyed it from start to finish. And another great chorus. Hiya, the king of the sky. He's flying too fast and he's flying too high. Hiya, an eye for an eye. The legend will never die. Next up, we have Great War. Obviously, this is a song about World War I, but this one is more, a bit more specifically about the horrors experienced within the war. Where dead men lies, I'm paralysed, my brother's eyes are gone. And he shall be buried here, nameless marks his grave. Mother home, get a telegram and shed a tear of grief. Mud in blood in foreign land, trying to understand. There was a touch of Dio's holy diver to this one, and dare I say... Eye of the Tiger by Survivor? I have to say that this was by far my favourite song on the album. I absolutely love this one. I've listened to this so many times over the past couple of weeks because this was released as a single a while ago. This was an awesome song. Next up we have A Ghost in the Trenches. This one was written about Francis Pega Megabau, an Aboriginal Canadian sniper and scout during the Great War. He was the best sniper of the war with 378 confirmed sniper kills and over 300 captured prisoners. And apparently after the war he campaigned for equal rights for Aboriginals in Canada. Under fire, a ghost that roams the battlefield. Move between the lines, a soldier breaking the confines. Just another man and rifle. A marksman and a scout revealed. Makes his way from trench to trench alone, moving undetected. This was another one, unfortunately, that I wasn't so taken with. It just didn't have that catchy vocal pattern that I was looking for. Yeah, this one, this one wasn't so much for me. You'll have to excuse me, I've just moved as there was a huge gang of people who just suddenly turned up in a car park in the pouring rain. I've got no idea what their intentions were, but I didn't want to find out. Next up, we have Fields of Verdun. This song's about the Battle of Verdun, a battle during World War I that took place from February 21st to December 18th, 1916. The Germans attacked countless times, but were constantly pushed back by the French defenders. A very Iron Maiden style intro with a hint of Megadeth thrown in. One of the things that I do truly enjoy about this album is the, the lyrics, the way they really conjure up imagery of the battles that they're portraying. As the drum roll started on that day, heard a hundred miles away, a million shells were fired and the green fields turned to grey. The bombardment lasted all day long, yet the forts were standing strong, heavily defended. Now the trap's been sprung and the battle has begun. Next up is the penultimate track, The End of the War to End All Wars. The war to end all wars was often how World War I was referred to. Ending on November 11th, 1918, it was one of the most destructive wars in history, with an estimated 15 to 19 million casualties. Now, as far as this song goes, musically speaking, I could have done with more of this. It sounded heavier than a lot of the other songs, had orchestration mixed in with it, and it had a kind of an eastern tinge, especially in the intro. And there was also touches of Devon Townsend I found to the production. I loved the way that this song built in intensity, and the inclusion of the choir I thought was absolutely fantastic. Fantastic. November 11th settling the score from 15 to 20 million. Almost half of the dead civilian. A new world will dawn from the empire's fallen. The end of the war to end war. And the final song on the album is In Flanders Fields. This is a recreation of the classic poem by Lieutenant Colonel John McRae, and this was done using a choir. Flanders was a region in Belgium where heavy fighting took place during the war. I remember when I was a kid watching Blackadder Goes Forth. The uh, awesome comedy with Rowan Atkinson, of course. And I always remember that ending shot where they went over the top and then the final scene was this desolate field turning to uh, fields full of poppies. And that, uh, that always really, really got me, that scene. It always really did. It was just such an emotional scene. Basically what happened is there were so many dead bodies strewn across the field that... Uh, 
pop has ended up growing over there because of the fertilizer essentially of the dead bodies. In Flanders fields the poppies blow, between the crosses row on row, that mark our place and in the sky the lark still bravely singing fly, scarce heard amid the guns below. We are the dead, short days ago we lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved and now we lie in Flanders fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe, to you from fading hands we throw. The torch be yours to hold it high, if ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders fields. A truly haunting way to end the album, and a poignant reminder of just how horrific World War I was, and those who fought for their countries, not just on the English side, but everybody, the countless people who died, the millions of people who died for their loved ones, sucks man in terms of a score for the album i'm going to give this one a 7 out of 10 and i know that there's going to be people screaming at me right now because i can understand how a lot of people would put this as a 9 or even a 10 out of 10 i do understand that but as i said power metal is just not my thing however i don't think 7 out of 10 is too bad a score i have to confess that when i put my lists together of upcoming albums and i know that there are certain albums that i have to review when i saw this one on the list I was kind of, eh, you know, I'm not really, not really feeling it. Having said that, I'm really, really surprised at how many of the songs in this I really did enjoy. And I'm not just saying that flippantly either. The songs that I did enjoy in this album, I enjoyed immensely. There was some fantastic stuff on here. As, as there always is with power metal bands, the chorus is everything. Those huge choruses that just... I could imagine these going down absolutely fantastic live. The musicianship was absolutely stellar from start to finish. Everyone's playing their hearts out. Truly technical musicians. They know exactly what they're doing. Great vocals, great lyrics. Just, yeah, just, just some of the songs weren't for me. But what I did enjoy, I thought was absolutely fantastic. So that was the album and that was this review. Um, I'm going to be back, hopefully, with another Q&A sometime during the week, part three of my q and I actually recorded it weeks ago but I haven't had a chance to do anything with it and next week we've got a new album by Rosalie Cunningham which I'm going to uh, get a review of out of that and I'm still no no actually I'm not going to I'm not going to say any more than that I'm not going to say any more than that I'm going to try and do a few more videos and no, I'm not going to say any more than that either god damn it Jesus just leave it just leave it well I suppose I suppose if I'm leaving it then then that's it <laughs>